Okay, my cat's being a bit needy. I sat down to make this video and she decided she wanted to be on my lap. So I'm going to let her be on my lap while I make the video. Now the previous video that I made was all about how to make antennas, how to go around constructing them and using them and as a demonstration that the ink actually worked as an antenna. And there were quite a lot of things that I didn't actually say in that because uh, it was already about 10 minutes long and all I'd done was make an antenna and tune in the TV with it. So I thought I'd make a kind of additional video, which is sort of an addendum with notes on it. Now the fact that the ink can be used as um, an antenna actually is pretty exciting because of course it means that you can um, print an antenna onto just about anything, print or paint it onto just about anything, including paper, plastic, uh, a brick wall. Now I did a whole range of antennas and I have really no idea what would be the best kind of antenna, so certainly some experimentation with that is needed. Because that small antenna that I did that um, tuned in the television is by probably not the smallest. It probably could be even smaller than that and that would certainly be worth looking at to see what kind of size was actually required in order to receive the signal. And I suspect that the antenna could be made much smaller than the one that I demonstrated. So that in itself is very interesting obviously. Now obviously being able to paint your antenna onto a wall and just do away with antennas altogether um, as a, and a separate device was pretty cool. And remember the antenna um, actually had the same signal unamplified as the amplified antenna that I was a store-bought antenna. So there's an awful lot of really good and interesting things about it. Now obviously the video was really aimed at people who have the ink already or people who are uh, looking to buy the ink or are uh, looking to buy and resell the ink to give them ideas of the kind of people that they ought to be approaching, the kind of things that the ink will do so that they can know where to go in order to resell the ink. So obviously one big use of antennas is with uh, radio frequency ID tags, RFID tags. The idea that the antenna can be used to receive a televisional signal means that in theory it can be used to receive any signal whatsoever, so it could certainly be used to print RFID tags. It could certainly be used to print uh, radio aerials, no real reason why not. Television aerials obviously, and there's a whole range of television aerials that are made currently that are actually quite expensive that can be replaced quite easily with um, printed antennas. Uh, there's no reason why you couldn't put it in a mobile phone, so instead of actually making a chip part antenna, part of the antenna is part of the PCB, you could actually just print it onto the phone case and you would have a whole antenna as part of that process. So the fact that it can be made into antennas is actually really, really exciting. <coughs> Although, of course, it may not at first appear that way, but it is. Now, I used antenna designs that are basically um, researched on the internet and people said, hey, this works as a good antenna and those are the designs I used. Apart from the last one when I just used a butterfly antenna. Now there are plenty of antenna designs including spiral antennas or um, any design you would want you could try as an antenna. So you could literally paint a butterfly. Fractal antennas would obviously be something that would be much easier to make here and actually quite complex fractal shapes because now you're painting or printing them instead of um, forming wire into fractal shapes. So. Uh, a lot of work could be done on fractal antennas using the ink or just general antenna designs. Now clearly it's a paint uh, and there's no reason you can't paint over it. So you don't have to have a visible antenna at all. As I say you could paint your bedroom wall with the antenna and then over paint it with any old emulsion really and your antenna would become completely invisible. You just wouldn't be able to see it. So there's a lot of that kind of work can be done in what would be a really good antenna design based on other geometries and other shapes and other designs rather than the simple ones that I did. Now the ink, although it looks metallic when it's been burnished, is in fact a carbon ink. It's 100% carbon, there are no metal particles in it. Uh, what that means of course is that the uh, production process of the ink itself is insignificant in terms of its cost in, in relation to a metal based ink and um, it doesn't degrade in the same way that a metal based ink would do. I mean, I don't really know what kind of degradation you would get over time and that would certainly be something to test, but it wouldn't be anything in the order of a copper based or even a silver based ink. So it's got, uh, or it should have uh, an extreme range of uh, stability for its use as well. It should be a long lasting ink. 
Now, obviously, what you could do is paint a reflector behind your Wi-Fi and boost your Wi-Fi signal. You could paint into the lid of a computer and your um, computer antenna is then gone and part of the case becomes a computer antenna. So there's a whole range of really exciting things you can do with it. Um, the ink obviously has long-term life in terms of its stability and use. And there's an awful lot of experimentation that could be done with it to see what other kind of antennas that can be constructed with it and put into uh, various systems. So I hope that gives you some idea of where we could go with this. And I hope it helped. Anyway, thank you for watching.